Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at another challenge from the Hack the Boo CTF that recently completed on Hack the Box. It's a Halloween, th Halloween themed CTF, beginner focused, five categories. And today we're going to look at a challenge from the forensics category called Halloween Invitation. And I'll be honest, I've seen that this is a, I've seen this download and I saw it was an invitation.docm and I stopped and I thought we'd do it live, see what we can figure out. So, um, before I jump in, a quick note about file extensions. Um, if we look at you know what's going on with this invitation.docm, it's a Microsoft Word 2007 plus document. There was a between tw Word 2007, 2003 and 2007, there was a major change in how documents were handled. Um, there's a completely different file format. It moved to this zip based format from a pro older proprietary binary format. Um, I've got a video, I actually, actually did a talk on this um, a year ago or so. Um, you can go look at more details on that, but um, what you need to know here is the new file extensions like .docx and .docm um, came about with this file format conversion. And so with a .docx file, you cannot use macros. And so it's almost safe in that way um, versus a .docm file you can. Now, what you see with phishing a lot today is that people are just going to use .doc extension. And even though it's the newer format, Word is smart enough to say, oh, well, you're using the newer format, so I'm going to go ahead and open it that way. And then doesn't limit your macros that way either. And that's, that gets under the radar. Um, but if you are doing some kind of instant response, seeing a .docm file should definitely stick out to you as that could have macros. I'm interested in that. So um, when I have macros, OLE VBA is the tool I always will go to first. Um, and it will spit out a ton of information. Um, let's go back up to the top here and we can look at what comes out. Um, it prints out the actual macros themselves. So there's an auto open function. Definitely interesting. Something that's going to run without user interaction on opening. We care about that. Um, it's doing some shell stuff to set current directories. Um, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of obfuscation stuff going on here where it's kind of rearranging data of some kind, um, passing it to this function, appending, appending it to this string here. Um, scroll down some more. We got some more functions here doing some stuff. Um, we got some PowerShell stuff and it actually being called in a shell. That's definitely interesting. We want to know what's going to be happening there. Um, and then let's see what else is going on here. Um, some more character manipulation stuff going on. And then we have our table, our summary that OLED VBA gives us. Um, it's calling out there's an auto exec function. It's calling out the suspicious things such as a shell, creating text files, um, calling PowerShell for sure. And then it's got a whole dump of, hey, these are hex strings. You probably want to deobfuscate. Um, and there's a bunch of them. We saw those. Um, and so we'll actually run it again. Um, actually, sorry, before we go too far, I should say we can look at this. Um, if we do LibreOffice uh, invitation.docm, it's going to warn us that there's macros. Um, but we get, you know, this probably, let's see. So we have a nice Halloween invitation with a bat and a party and the, the text looks a little funky and this is kind of screwed up. I'm guessing, I'm guessing this looks prettier in Word. Uh, we could jump over there and look at it, but not really a need. Um, we can come up here to, let's see, tools, macros, edit macros, and we can actually look at the macros in this document. Um, see if we can find them. Yeah, so here, here's the auto open macro, and it, it actually shows it to us. I don't think these will actually run in OpenOffice, but it will show them to us. We could see the same kinds of things we were seeing before um, there. So um, we're not going to use this any further, but I don't, I don't think, but let's... Um, Good to know it's there, I guess. And we could always go over into an actual instance of Word on a Windows machine and actually have access to the debugger and put breakpoints and stuff. Um, and we will, we'll, we may get there if we have to. Um, well, we're going to see if we can do it entirely in Windows. So we're going to background leave our office there so it can stay open. Um, and we're going to go back to OLE VBA. Let's see, OLE, yay. And let's look at the help menu here. And there's a couple of things we want to call out. Um, decode is going to deobfuscate display the obfuscated strings with their content um reveal is going to show us um, macro source code after replacing obfuscated strings by their decoded content and deob will attempt to deobfuscate things so let's go ahead and try again with that same thing but this time we'll use these flags here so we'll use um decode we'll use reveal and we'll use the ob, and we'll run that and see what comes back. And what we actually get here is it's the same. It gives us the same output up here at the top, going back above all these strings. Um, but then at the bottom, it's going to print out to us another attempt of like what what does the deobfuscated code look like? And we can see stuff a little simpler here. 
Um, it's still not super clear. You know, we can still see we're writing, um, we're creating a, a scripting file system object. We are creating a text file at drop path, which is temp um, history.back. We are going to write to that, this banovu, which came out of here, which calls this function here, uh, which is somewhere in here. Um, is down at the bottom here, right here. And that is what's calling this, uh, this other function up here with all the buffers of data. And they're a little bit different this time. It's actually gone through and I've converted them into integer values, which I guess is somewhat better. Um, but we can tell right, right away, we can say this, we're very interested in what this block of data is. And we can see these are integer values and they're in the ASCII range. So it looks like ASCII text here. Um, so it's possible this function right here is converting these to ASCII text. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, I guess what the easiest way to do this, let's, let's go ahead and grab this and we'll, we'll just pipe all that to a file, call it out and we will vim out. I'm going to just start chopping out data that I don't want. I want to get down to, uh, actually, I don't want this stuff either. Let's go back up to the top. So control B to select lines. And let's go back to, um, we don't need any of this. We don't need the table with all these dumps. Okay, here we go. Here's the part we want. So we want to get, we want to really isolate this buffer of these buffers of ints. We can do D, D to delete that. Um, let's get to the bottom here and see if what else we want to get. Um, so there's our end. So we will uh, control uh, shift V again to select lines, go all the way to the bottom, hit D to delete. And now we've got our lines. Let's go back up to the top here. We can also clean out. So if I control V, now I'm selecting um, a visual buffer. I'll go all the way over to here and I will go down. Do page down if we want. So maybe I get rid of our indenting as so we go down here and we're going to get rid of all, everything up through the first integer on each row like that and now the last thing we need to do is a couple there's two things we got to get rid of these trailing spaces here so i'm going to do um colon you can see i'm operating right down here at the bottom uh percent s to search and then slash the pattern i'm going to search for is open single quote open double quote close parenthesis um i guess maybe we can do new line in there yeah new line and then we're going to replace that with a space and we will do that globally and there we go we now have all of this into one line and you can see down here we're on line one of one um, and we clean all that up now the last thing we do it looks like part of the deobfuscation it kind of just left these stray b's in there and we don't want to we want this to be a 119 not a not a one and a 19 so um, we're going to do the same thing here colon the upper end down at the bottom again um, percent s slash and now the, we're looking for quote b we're going to replace that with nothing and we're going to do it globally and we can see that there are 55 substitutions and now we have a single line of data um, i'm going to shrink this down a little bit so i can get it onto one page and copy it grab that control shift c to copy and now let's go ahead and jump over to cyber chef I've searched for it before and I've been there before. This is a tool. If you are not using CyberChef, it's, it is the Swiss army knife of how to interact with data and, and mess with it. So we'll paste our data in here. We got our one line of data and we, we think these are numbers, right? And we want to convert them. So we're going to do um, search for decimal over here. We'll do from decimal. If we hover over this, we can see uh, con converts the data to its original uh, from an ordinal integer array back to raw form. So you can see 72, 101, 108, 108, 111 becomes hello. That's exactly what we want. And then we put this here, we get an output buffer down here that looks a lot like base 64 encoded data. Um, and again, if you're new and you're not, you, have, you don't recognize base 64 encoded data, you're going to over time. It's incredibly common in CTFs. It's also common in the real world. So um, it's something to become familiar with, but you're gonna basically have uppers and lower cases, digits, um, it's going to end in zero, one, or two equal signs. And then you're also going to have um, flash and plus. And so we can search for base 64 over here. Let's say from base 64, throw this over here. And now we've got what looks kind of like text. Um, there's a little bit, this is another thing you're going to see very commonly in Windows. Um, and that is that Windows uses 16-bit ASCII characters. So each character takes 16 bit. Most, when you think about ASCII in general, you tend to think about seven bits, eight bits, a single byte. 
Um, and so what we want to do is, let's see, I'll show you. Actually, we can look at this real quick in a hex dump. Um, to hex dump, we'll show this here. And you can see that like this dollar sign here is composed of 2400. Zero, zero. The S is 7300. Zero, zero. The equal sign is 3D00. Zero, zero. So each character is taking up 16 bits. And it's displaying to us when, when, when we don't tell CyberChef that that's the expectation, what ends up happening is all the, it treats all of those as, as sing, each byte as its own character, and all of those null bytes become dots. And so um, that we could convert this back, but the, probably the easiest way to do that is just to remove null bytes. We can do that right here. And when we put that there, now we have some PowerShell code. Um, it's getting a IP address. It's got some other stuff. Um, it's going to actually invoke REST method using basic parts. So it's going to actually create a web request with some headers and some stuff. Um, and it's going to sleep. And at the end of the sleep, we have a flag right here. So we we found the flag. Um, it's always fun to figure out exactly how to hide a flag in some PowerShell data or whatever. But um, this is a pretty simple one. So um, su super easy macros. We got the flag. We didn't even open up Windows. We have solved, figured out exactly what the macros were doing. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this. Thanks for sticking around till the end. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.